Thanks, Nishant. Hello, all, and thank you for joining us today. I am Marco Vrien. I'm CFO of Nokia. Today, my agenda is focused around two main topics. First, I will take some time to walk you through my priorities as CFO. Then, I want to provide a bit more color on our outlook for both 2021 and 23. With that, let's start. My first and main priority as a CFO is to create shareholder value. And since I have started my role as a CFO at Nokia, one of the first questions I have received from you, investors and analysts, has been, what are your key observations after coming into the company? And both Pekka and I were in a strong alignment with what we found. The end-to-end -end strategy that had been in place was clearly not aligned with how customers in this industry buy. Our matrix organization was overly complex with a large leadership team and lack of clarity. And they had been very heavy steering at the corporate level in the past. In general, we noticed that there was a lot of unclear accountability internally. And then additional R&D investments were needed, especially in mobile networks. And as we have seen, our financial performance and stock price performance over the past five years has been clearly below our potential. But on a positive note, we see that our employees are truly passionate about working at Nokia with clear desire to succeed. And Nokia has some really great technology with leadership positions and pockets of strong financial performance in several areas, as you will hear more about today. And these key observations led us to make some drastic changes to the way we operate, which we have shared with you over the past few months as well. First, we will move from an end-to-end -to, -end to best of breed approach, and we will focus on driving through product leadership. And this shift doesn't mean that we will be siloed in our customer interface or not have the ambition to develop system architecture and we're willing, willing to deliver compatible solutions when a customer buys from more than one business. But the main thing is businesses will no longer be able to hide behind the idea of end-to-end. -end. They must prove their ability to create value on their own. And in addition, we are reducing complexity throughout the organization when we are shifting away from the matrix organization and we are moving to a lean corporate structure, which I will explain more about soon. We have empowered now the individual business groups and given them clear accountability. And lastly, as a tech company, we decided that R&D would be our clear priority to try sustainable tech leadership. And by changing the mindset within Nokia and making the beaches much more accountable, this will create a strong base for value creation. Under the new operational model, the beaches are responsible for first, ensuring that the return on capital employed is higher than the cost of capital. Second, responsible for both portfolio management as well as go-to-market strategy, which will support growth. Third, generating free cash flow and looking in the ways to try working capital efficiencies. And fourth, of course, hitting their targets. In addition to BGS, I would like to highlight also the value creation opportunities of NGP Capital. That's our venture uh, capital unit in corporate level. It was founded in 2005. NGP has made over 100 direct and over 400 indirect investments in areas including mobile technologies, 
advanced cloud capabilities and augmented intelligence. NGP is managing Nokia's venture programs across six funds today. And on a cumulative basis, through end of last year, NGP has returned nearly 600 million euro of capital to Nokia, with performance in excess of 20% IRR. And at the end of last year, the, our venture investments had a net asset value of 750 million euro. Now we have established a clear change momentum in the organization. We have simplified our structure in order to empower our business groups. By removing the matrix organization, we are also moving the R&D closer to the customers. And with the lean corporate structure, we eliminate heavy cost allocations by moving the cost to our business group's control. And this will enable the beaches to optimize their businesses for future value creation. They will be able to determine what resources they will need and control their own destiny as well. To expand further on the BG-led restructuring that you've seen that earlier this week we announced a restructuring uh, that the plan is that we will lower our cost base by 600 million euros by the end of 2023. And these plans are mainly in place for mobile networks and cloud and network services. The expected cost savings will offset increased investments that we are making now in R&D and future capabilities, as well as related to salary inflation. Note that we expect annual salary inflation of approximately 200 million euros. Also note that we did not change our 2021 guidance, and we have factored all of this into our 23 guidance as well. In total, we expect restructuring and associated charges relating to this plan to be about 600 to 700 million euros. And please note also that we have uh, uh, about 500 million euro cash outflows related to prior plans. Next, I want to explain how we will drive these improved returns through rigorous performance management. We have created a new Nokia business system, which we will use to guide us on how to achieve performance and create value across our business groups for our shareholders and customers. It combines a group of procedures and processes into one essential management and reporting instrument. This new system is designed around our lean corporate structure with decentralized operating model and empowered and accountable beaches. The Nokia business system establishes key management practices around four areas. First, capital allocation and ambitious and fact-based long-term target setting for our business groups, including active portfolio choices, target setting with step-by-step -step improvements. The second area is in a rigorous performance management. This allows us to focus on risks and opportunities in performance discussions with PL entities, which is measured via scorecards. It helps provide a consistent drumbeat and acts as an early warning system. The third area is group policy setting and process architecture and the interaction between corporate functions and business groups. We have a decentralized lean process landscape where business groups are responsible for all business related processes, while group functions set the group common policies and processes. And this also sets a groundwork for managing the charging mechanism between business groups and shared service centers. And the fourth area focuses on talent management and value proposition to live up to our people and cultural mission. And this includes coaching employees to create a platform for success and also provide frequent feedback on performance 
during the year. And this enables us to empower and inspire people uh, to create success. Then moving on to capital allocation and free cash flow. Consistent with our prudent capital structure philosophy, we have a clear set of capital allocation priorities. Our prime focus is on deploying capital to ensure technology leadership. And we are monitoring investment levels in these sectors where we compete to ensure that our capital allocation decisions are consistent with our leadership ambitions. We will invest in R&D, the secure technology leadership. And as you know, we have said that we will increase our R&D in the low hundreds of millions in 2021. And all beaches and investments should earn returns above cost of capital. Our next priority is to provide shareholders with capital returns by improving our financial performance and continuing to build on our sound capital structure and solid capital allocation principles. And we have a clear ambition to improve our performance and being in a position where we can deliver returns for our shareholders by re-establishing a dividend. The board of directors will make a decision on the dividend after Q4 2021. We have also today introduced our new dividend policy, which is that we will target recurring, stable, and over time growing dividend payments. And in our dividend decision, we will take into account our financial position and business outlook. And the dividend would be started from a sustainable level. We strengthened our financial position during 2020 and ended the year with a total cash of 8.1 billion, which is up uh, from 6 billion at the end of 2019. We intend to maintain a level of total cash and current uh, financial in investments at 30% or more of annual sales. This would provide Nokia with a strong enough balance sheet to be able to manage through potential macro and industry shocks and the ability to do bolt-on M&A. We have a clearly positive net cash position, meaning that we have a sufficient cash to cover all debt maturities. We secured additional debt of 1 billion in May 2020, which is expiring 2025 and 28, as pre-financing for 2021 maturities, which was already paid earlier this year, and 2022 maturities. So the next refinancing need is quite a ways off in Q1 2024. And I just wanna highlight as well that we have a clear target to have an investment grade credit rating. In 2021, we expect to generate a positive free cash flow. Note that in Q4 2020, we received a 500 million euro early payment as this was due in Q1 21. On the left hand side uh, on the chart, uh, we have provided a detailed assumptions for 2021. Please note regarding the restructuring item uh, in 2021, we expect cash flows related to restructuring of total uh, about 2.5% of our net sales. And about half of this is related to older programs. I would also like to highlight that our ambition is to focus on working capital rotation days. And regarding inventories, we will optimize further by categorizing inventories in the three buckets, which are fast movers, slow movers, and dust collectors. When it comes to receivables, we will focus on commercial discipline and terms and conditions. Also, I want to highlight that by the end of 2020, we significantly reduced the amount of sale of receivables and are currently at the level that is normal for Nokia and our industry as well.
And going forward, we will focus on using factoring, mainly to manage credit risks. Regarding payables, we are already doing well and we will continue to focus on securing optimized payment terms. By making progress with working capital efficiency and improving the profitability of the beaches, we target a meaningful uplift of free cash flow performance beyond 2021. We are also focused on delivering transparent investor communications. And we are driving the following improvements. First, streamlining and simplifying our financial reports. We will make it easier for you to find the key content that you are looking for. And we now have these four beaches for which we will provide transparency into our business performance to help you assess the true value of each of the businesses. And we will provide a balanced outlook and give transparent updates on a quarterly basis. And regarding ESG, we are working to further integrate ESG into our reporting. And I'm proud to say that we were recently ranked as number four on Wall Street Journal's list of most sustainably managed companies. And Pekka already mentioned the Ethisphere recognition. While these are both great achievements, we will not let up. We will continue to push forward on these areas. Now, moving to our outlook for 2021 and 23. First of all, here is our outlook for 2021, which we have reiterated today. This slide also shows our outlook for 2023, which we published earlier today, as highlighted by Pekka. In full year 2023, we expect our net sales to grow faster than the market. This is driven by improved portfolio competitiveness and our investments in technology leadership. We believe we can expand our comparable operating margin to the 10 to 13 percent range in 2023. And this is driven by individual actions that each BG is taking. We also provided an outlook for free cash flow in 2023. For now, we're just guiding for clearly positive free cash flow. And we will consider providing quantitative free cash flow guidance in the future. And lastly, we have introduced comparable return on invested capital targets for both 2021 and 23 today. And while each PG will describe their expectations for 2021 and 23, I wanted to help bridge how this would look at the group level. And as you can see here, for 2021, improvements from network infrastructure cloud and network services and technologies will be offset by mobile networks, which we have explained before as well. As we move to 2023, we expect improvements across the board. This is driven by concrete action that each business group will speak about today. Additionally, today we have provided more granularity around each business group's longer-term comparable operating margin targets. And this demonstrates that each of our business groups will contribute to value creation as we look out to 2023. And you will hear from each BG president, so I will focus my commentary on some key points here. On mobile networks, that's expecting to show the most improvement from a comparable operating margin perspective. They're completing their turnaround this year and getting on a value creation path, uh, and that's a priority for them. Network infrastructure is expected to show gradual improvement from an already strong base. And this business will continue to drive innovation as a competitive advantage. And focus areas include silicon and systems to deliver industry-leading system performance and power efficiency, 
software leadership to deliver robust and reliable networks with critical capabilities at scale, and software automation to provide agility and simplicity of operations. And cloud and network services is also expected to show significant mar margin expansion as they optimize their portfolio to focus on accelerated growth and value creation. On the slide, you can see that the key emerging opportunities that cloud and network services is focused on uh, pivoting towards. Nokia Technologies will continue to deliver strong comparable operating margin this year and through 2023. And they are driving innovation through investments in 5G and multimedia R&D, standardization, and continue to renew the patent portfolio for long term. Secure renewals for major deals and expand coverage on and diversify into new segments, including consumer electronics and connected vehicles. So, clearly, there are a lot of opportunities to drive value creation in each of our four business groups. Furthermore, each business group has concrete plans to capture these opportunities. And this gives us confidence in our 2023 comparable operating margin target of 10 to 13 percent. And then moving to a summary and some key takeaways. This leads us to a storyline that you will hear throughout the day today. We are going a phase journey and this is not a quick fix. 2021 is a year of reset. We are building a foundation now, putting in the place what is needed to improve our performance going forward. And while this is a multi-stage journey, as Nishant and Pekka explained, different businesses are on different timelines of this journey. Some businesses are already in the accelerate stage. We believe that this positions as well to grow profitably in 2022 and beyond. So in summary, we have taken the necessary steps and adjusted our focus to ensure that we create shareholder value going forward. We are focused on driving a strong fundamental business performance by empowering our beaches and aligning them with how customers buy. And we are focused on securing technology leadership Rather than having end-to-end -end as a cornerstone of our equity story, we are now clearly focused on best of breed. And we have clear priorities regarding capital allocation, which are focused on value creation fundamentals. And all this will be tracked through rigorous performance management. This will provide us maximum foresight and the ability to put in place corrective actions in order to stay on course. Thank you. So, this concludes my presentation. We will now move on to a first Q&A, which we will be moderated by Matt Shimao. If you have been invited into the Zoom call, I would ask you to now log off the webcast and log on to Zoom. We will put a holding slide for a minute or two and give you a chance to swap formats. For the rest of the audience, please bear with us for a minute until we can start the live Q&A.